so uh, in the first module as i had discussed conditional probability then i talked about uh, various applications of conditional probability the first one was multiplication rule am i audible to everyone the first one was multiplication rule that help to compute joint probability of joint occurrence of two events and then we had what law of total probability that means we are willing to compute probability of an event with respect to various scenario that we observe in the experiment so that one is the law of total probability so it was uh, there in module 1 what kind of form that law of total probability will take there in here model 2 because in model 2 we are dealing with probability distribution random variable and probability distribution everything come in the framework of random numbers numbers numeric approach so if that approach is there there is no such kind of set theory thing uh, like uh, general set theory thing here we are dealing with numbers random numbers so here the law of total probability it will be what it will be turned into marginalization marginal probability mass function if you are dealing with discrete random variable and then we had discussed the last uh, application of the there might be many more application last application we had discussed about bayes rule for as an application of conditional probability in order to update the probability of uh, an event based on prior information a prior belief or some kind of some kind of uh, information provided by expert so that uh, means we are trying to update the probability of an event so that update is happening through bayes rule and that one is the bayes rule is talking about relation between prior and posterior probability or updated probability so that relation we had already seen that in the process we had seen various terms prior probability likelihood and evidence when you observe evidence generally in court drama movies you might have seen evidence kind of approach okay so same things that like someone is providing evidence more better evidence definitely your posterior or updated probability will improve so that kind of things so all those here uh, again it will come here the uh, what mimicking we conditional probability as conditional probability mass function with respect to discrete random variable so that's why here i am talking about applications of conditional probability mass function so in the in last class we had already discussed so what was the definition of application uh, definition definition of conditional probability conditional probability mass function it was defined in the framework of conditional probability it was defined in the framework so conditional probability uh, mass function it was defined as like if you are suppose uh, you are finding conditional probability mass function of x given y x given y and this one is a small p of here what is variable x is variable x is varying and y is given this one is one one observation of y this x is will vary so here we are finding updated uh, probability mass function of x so this one we call it uh, marginal probability mass function or probability mass function of x here we don't bother about uh, y and other kind of things just simply we will say that it is probability mass function of x now here we will call it conditional probability mass function or updated probability mass function why you get update because you are observing another random variable y based on the observation of y we try to see distribution of x so this one is a new distribution that distribution we call it conditional probability mass function of x it is not conditional probability mass function of y it is conditional probability mass function of x condition on y condition on y and how it was defined how it was defined so it was defined like asking to get up that uh, in front in front of you there is one student is sleeping so how you will define 
it is just defined in term of conditional probability. When you are saying conditional probability, it is, it is dealing with probability measure. Capital P is the probability measure. How it is defined? As? It is defined as x is observing a value small x given that y has already observed a value small y. in term of okay when you talk about this this one is a term in module 2 in probability distribution conditional probability mass function when you come to write in this form it is become an, a term of module 1 it is just conditional probability mass conditional probability this you can call it event a and this you can call it event b so how conditional probability is defined? It is defined probability of happening of A within B, that means joint occurrence of A and B. If A is happening within B, means you are talking about joint occurrence of A and B. And you have to normalize it by the probability of B. Why? Because you are, new, you are trying to compute probability the newly designed probability with the scenario of B. So, that is why you normalize it. So, this one B is your new sample of space. That is why you are computing probability like this way. But here I have told that further how you will write this uh, probability in term of uh, random variable. You will write A intersection B as x is observing value a small a is what x is observing value a small x and B is what y is observing value a small y. And what is intersection here? End, comma, joint. It is giving joint meaning. Okay. Remember that A and B are not taking value from the same random variable. A and B are taking value from two different random variables. So that's why here the intersection will be turned into end. And end we represent it by comma. So this here we will put here comma. And this we call it joint probability of observing uh, the joint uh, point x and y, a small x and a small y. And uh, in denominator we will have probability that y is observing value a small y. And further, this one is the definition of conditional probability mass function that what we had already seen. And further you go, how you will write this one in more systematic way in term of probability mass function. So, the joint probability mass function uh, we will write it as a small p suffix x y argument is what here? The observed value x and y, x comma y. This is the argument of joint probability mass function p suffix x y. And in denominator we will have uh, a small p suffix y of a small y. Okay. So, this is the definition of directly you can write it here. This is. So, how it came? We came it through model 1, this definition. This I had, this definition I had already discussed. Now, uh, uh, first application I will talk about. The first application is multiplication rule. And multiplication rule we are applying in order to compute joint probability of A and B. And hence, joint probability of the random variable x and y joint point x comma y we are trying to compute. So, it would be what it would be a way to compute joint probability mass function of two random variable x and y when those are distributed jointly. Okay. So, here uh, this is the definition of conditional probability mass function that I just I, I discuss. Okay. Uh, now, by restating this definition, that means taking this component uh, uh, left hand side and we will get it here. What is the joint probability mass function? How you compute? You, if you are having two random variables x and y, how you will compute? This say that if you observe y first, then you know the probability mass function of y. Once you have already observed probability mass function of y, then condition on that each value of y you will come up with conditional probability mass function of x. So, that is where conditional probability mass function. So, this computation is always 
पॉसिबल ऑलवेज दिज दिज अप्रोच आर ऑलवेज ड्यूएबल सो वी ट्राई टू सपोज यू हैव टू डू टू थिंग्स इन टूगेदर टू थिंग्स इन टूगेदर आर बोथ आर ज्वाइंटली इन्वॉल्व सो वट यू हैव टू डू बोथ थिंग यू कांट डू टूगेदर सो फर्स्ट यू हैव टू फिक्स वन वन प्रॉब्लम यू डू दिस and that problem will be also it because both problems are jointly associated so then you are doing next problem so next you are introducing one kind of sequencing it is one kind of sequence so dependency is coming by default here okay and the result can be generalized for n number of joint random variable if you are having two joint random variable then you compute the probability joint probability mass function through this multiplication rule but if you are having Uh, n number of uh, random variable jointly distributed random variable then how you will compute probability joint probability mass function of those n number of random variable by going through this multiplication rule first you observe x1 and if you are observing x1 that means you know the probability mass function of x1 then you observe x2 once you have already observed x1 so that's why you are having conditional probability mass function of x2 given x1 once you have observed uh, x1 and x2 these two in together it is talking about joint probability mass function of x1 and x2 if you see he, here it is talking about joint probability mass function of x1 and x2 x1 comma x2 now afterward you are observing third random variable when you are observing third random variable once we have already observed x1 and x2 so that's why conditional probability mass function x of x3 given x1 and x2 will come will come like way uh, likewise the last term will come that nth random variable you are observing when you are observing when you have already observed uh, x1 x2 up to xn minus 1 okay so this is the way to compute joint probability mass function of uh, n jointly distributed random variable so this is the last term what we call it you are talking about uh, the probability mass function of x1 when you have already observed first n minus 1 uh, random variable and this we call it generalization of multiplication rule and uh, it is uh, helping to compute uh, probability joint probability mass function of uh, given jointly random variables so here we will take a simple example there this example looks very easy it is taken from that mit book uh, that introduction to probability uh, so uh, professor may often has her fact wrong okay uh, often uh, it is not always often uh, she is giving wrong fact something like that she is a professor uh, she is giving wrong fact uh, not always often and uh, answer each of her students question incorrectly each of her student question incorrectly with probability 1 by 4 that means if you are asking a question then what is the probability of being right answer it would be 3 by 4 and what is the probability of being wrong answer it is 1 by 4 so so it is not like that always she is giving correct answer so there is some kind of incorrection okay uh, incorrect option so and it is independent of other questions so uh, questions are in, if you are asking different question so it is not like that the answer of second question will have relation with first it is not like that again same thing okay so in each lecture may is, professor may is ask either zero question one question two question with probability 1 by 3 what does it mean with probability 1 by 3 means equal probability 1 that means uh, uniform discrete random variable that means with probability 1 by 3 Uh, she will be asked zero question with probability 1 uh, 1 by 3 she will be asked one question with probability uh, 1 by 3 she will be asked two question so probability of uh, being asked zero or one and two question all are having same probability equal probability that one is 1 by 3 uniform discrete probability distribution okay now if you consider x and y be the number of question x is number of question may is asked and y is number of question c answer wrong in a given lecture so what are the possible value of x when g x is observing uh, value 0 1 2 and what are the observation of y 
0 1. So, again y will observe the similar value 0 1 2. If I simply I am asking what is the probability uh, mass function of x? What is the probability mass function of x? It is very easy, it is 1 by 3. It is already given. But if I ask what is the probability mass function of y? Can you answer it? Can you compute it? What is the probability mass function of y? You have to think. Directly you can't give answer. But one thing you can do, you can find probability mass function of y given x. That, that one is computable. That one is tractable. And if I am directly saying what is the probability mass function of y, it is a little bit complicated. So how you have to compute it? And then once you will be able to compute probability mass function of y given x, then you have to compute joint probability mass function of x and y. Job is done. Okay. So how we will go uh, uh, tackle this problem here? We consider that, okay. Uh, so here joint probability mass function here we will compute it. How? First we are observing probability mass function of x. Why? Because we, we know that what is the probability mass function of x. So that is way. And based on first observation we will try to compute probability mass function of y given x. That is where this uh, concept is coming here. So how many points will be there? How many points will be there? So in one axis you take value of x. What are the value x is observing? 0, 1, 2. And along vertical axis, consider y. y is observing value along vertical axis. y is taking value along vertical axis. So again, here y is observing 0, 1, 2. Okay. So, how many joint points are there? How many joint points? And how many joint points are there? 3 into 3, 9. How many joint points? Count 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 3 plus 3 plus 3, 9 joint points are there. So, how many joint probability you have to compute? 9 joint probability you have to compute. So, how, what would be your approach? And you know here, first, uh, another thing you know that what is the probability mass function of x? From the question itself, very clear, it is probability mass function of x is 1 by 3. That you know. But others you don't know. Other you have to compute it. So, probability mass function of x is 1 by 3, uh, okay. When x is equal to 0, 1 or to other for other value of x it is 0 we do not have to bother about. So, if you talk about joint uh, pro probability of joint point 1 1 1 1 would be here well, few example I have computed uh, what is the value of joint probability mass function of 1 1. So, first here uh, that means x is observing value 1 and y is also observing value 1. So, what first you will write it in that form of multiplication rule protein mass function that x is observing value 1 after y x we are observing y protein mass function what is the conditional protein mass function of y equal to 1 given that x has already observed 1. So, what is the protein mass function of x equal to 1 at 1 it is 1 by 3 there is no issue. If I am asking what is the protein mass function of y is equal to 1 given that x has already observed 1 that means one question has been asked, one question has been asked. So, what is the probability that uh, uh, that one is wrong? 1 by 3. So, it is already given you can uh, 1 by 4 sorry. What is the probability of being uh, one question has been asked, what is the probability that it is wrong? Wrong answer that may professor may is giving wrong answer it is 1 by 4. So, joint probability of 1 1 would be 1 by 3 into 1 by 4. So, in 1 by 12. Okay. Now, if you talk about the joint point 1 0, that means that one question has been asked with probability 1 by 3, uh, what is the probability that uh, y equal to 0? 0 wrong answer, that means correct. What is the probability of correct? 
so that one is 3 by 4 so that's why 1 by 3 into 3 by 4 so the prob probability of this joint point is 3 by 4 likewise you can compute all these here you can uh, also you can go in it is a sequential pro uh, problem you can put in uh, uh, that in uh, branch uh, tree kind of thing so this first layer is talking about uh, the distribution of x observing value 0, 1, 2, 3 with probability 1 by 3, 1 by 3, 1 by 3. So, here you can observe that if 0 question has been asked, what is the probability that uh, 0 answer, uh, wrong, C will give wrong answer? If 0 question has been asked, what if what is the probability that Professor May will give a wrong answer? 0. If 0 question has been asked, what is the probability that uh, Professor May will give a wrong answer? 1 by if she had, she has been asked no question, why she will answer? Why she will answer? If she is not answering, that means she is not giving a wrong answer. That means, what is the probability? 1. She is, if she is not uh, uttering anything, it means we will s s say that uh, she is saying right. If haven't, uh, trivial things, it is a very much trivial thing. Okay. Are you getting meaning of this or not? So, what is the probability of uh, 0, 0? 1 by 3. 1 by 3 times, I am saying that probability of 0, 0. That x is observing value 0 and y is observing value 0. Because if x is 0, y is taking value up to x. So, y would be by default 0. So, I am asking what is the probability of 0, 0? It is 1 by 3 into 1. So, 1 by 3. So, that is where this answer you are getting. If Professor May has been asked one question, what possible value y will take? Either C will answer 0 wrong answer or 1 wrong answer. C cannot go for 2 wrong answer. It is because one question has been asked. So, so 0 1. So, if it, C has been asked G, oh, one question at 0, if you go through 0 wrong answer, then this is the probability. If you go with 1 wrong answer, then this is the probability. Likewise, if C has been asked 2 question, what are the possibilities that, that Y will take value? 0, 1, 2. So, with respect to that, you will have 3 leap and these are the probability. Okay. So, these computation are very simple and here this we are computing here joint probability and these are the joint probability. If you simplify all these, these are the joint probability what you got it. Okay. If C has been here, what does it say? If I say C has been asked uh, zero question, what is the probability that uh, one wrong answer C will give? If C has been asked zero question, what is the probability that C, uh, C will give one wrong answer? Zero. Why C will answer? Zero question has been asked. So, 0. Likewise, if C has been asked 0 question, what is the probability that uh, C will give 2 wrong answer? 0 again. Likewise, if C has been asked 1 question, what is the probability that C will give 2 wrong answer? 0. Why C will go for another uh, answer without asking any question? Okay. So, that kind of, that is where these are coming 0 and rest are non-zero quantity. If you sum it up, sum all these probabilities, try to sum it, what is the sum of these uh, joint probabilities? In total, there are 9 probabilities. Uh, joint probability, if you sum it up, one. sum would be equal to 1. So, it is just satisfying the normalizing condition. Now, if I am asking to compute uh, probability mass function of x, it is already given. Again, I am asking to compute. How you will compute? How you will compute probability mass function of x? If you do column sum, means you are fixing the value of x and varying the value of y. That means you are getting a line with respect to fix x and y is varying. So, all possible. So, how many possible value of y? It is 3, 0, 1, 2. That means sum the probability. You are doing total probability kind of things. So, sum the probability, sum all these. So, what is the summation of 0 plus 0 plus uh, 16 by 48 means 1 by 3. What, be, what would be summation? 1 by 3. Okay. Now, likewise, what is the sum of the second column? 1 by 3. 
likewise what is the sec sum of third uh, column that one is also 1 by 3. Now come to row sum, just do row, row sum what you will get. So here I am making another column, okay, it is a smaller one. total sum is 1 for here we will get. So do row sum what you will get here 1 by 48 this sum what would be this sum 1 by 48 here 1 by 48 what is the second row sum this 4 plus 6 10 Uh, what is the last one? 37. 37 by 48. That one is what? That one is the distribution of y. You got the distribution of y. See, at the beginning, uh, to compute the protein mass function of y was complicated. But here, once you have already computed joint protein mass function of uh, x and y, then Finding distribution of y is very simpler. Very simple. So these are the possible distribution of y. That means, uh, what is the probability mass function of y at zero? It is 37 by 48. What is the probability mass function of uh, y at one? It is 10 by 48. What is the probability mass function of uh, y at two? It is 1 by 48. So all these are the probability mass uh, probability distribution of y so why you succeed in computing this one thanks to conditional probability mass function or conditional probability and its application to compute joint probability mass function so that's where so here problem becomes very simple that complicated problem becomes very simple very simple so all about that it is helping to compute joint probability mass function of uh, two random variable in given scenario and then go for rest of things okay i think this question might be clear to everyone solution might be clear to everyone what i have discussed okay now i will talk about second application that one is uh, marginalization in uh, this module uh, in the first module we will call it law of total probability so what is that so here what here when you are talking about marginalization that means you are having uh, two random variable, at least two random variable, those are jointly distributed. So here we are willing to find probability distribution, probability mass function of x. That means we are not putting any condition on y and y is a discrete random variable. And I had mentioned that if you are having a discrete random variable, then by inverse map of each observation of y, it come up with a partition of the sample space. Partition, so, so this uh, you can observe here uh, this uh, first one is uh, omega this one is omega and this one is the range of y that call it omega y so y is observing value it may observe finite or infinite value call it uh, y1 these are the random number yk i have written here so y1 y2 and likewise it will go yk. So what is the inverse image of uh, y1? It is, we call it uh, b1, call it b1. What is the inverse image of y2? We call it b2. So through inverse image approach, you come up with a, what we call partition of the sample of space you come up with. So these BKs are introducing, these are the inverse image of YK and it is introducing a partition of the sample of space due to discrete nature of Y because Y is a discrete random variable. Now you know that from law of total probability, suppose you consider this uh, X is observing a small X, you denote it by an event A, call it event A. That means if you are willing to compute probability of A, event A 
and B has been partitioned into various partition members B1, B2, B3 up to uh, it may go up to that finite or infinite depends upon that. So, how you will compute probability of A? It will probability of as per law of total probability you know that probability of A would be equal to probability of A uh, intersection. So, B A will come here like this way A will come here uh, like this way it is coming uh, it is having common element in every B i is. So, probability of A would be what? probability of A intersection B1 plus probability of A intersection B2 plus probability of A intersection BK, it will go like that because A is having common element with all BIs. So, you have to sum the probability and all those A intersection BIs happen to be mutually disjoint, there is no common thing. So, you have to sum up the as per uh, that uh, additive rule of the probability measure, you have to sum up all these and if you uh, are willing to write this one in a very uh, si simple form in the summation form you can write it like this way and we have already taken uh, here uh, a as x is observing value a small x and b b k is what y is observing value a small k and k is varying from 1 to uh, it may go up to what value y is observing ok. So, I have not given here like that ok. So, uh, the intersection is uh, replaced by comma. So, you will call it uh, better term if you expand it then you are saying that uh, it is joint probability of x is observed value a small x and y is all observed, already observed value y1. That means, you are trying to compute probability along the line x is equal to a small x, x is equal to a small x and y is uh, uh, if you y is free to vary that means, you are talking about all point on the line x equal to small x if it is a 2D uh, plane along horizontal axis, x is observing value along vertical axis, uh, y is observing value, then fixing x value means you are getting a line, ok, you are getting a line. Along the line you are you are taking all these probabilities, joint probability, ok. You are not taking all possible joint probability, you are just taking all those joint point along the line x equal to small x summing up and you here y is varying not x ok and just you write in the simple form like that means uh, joint probability of x is your observing value a small x and y is observing value a small x that means you are taking summation with respect to y that means you are ma you are marginalizing it, it for that a specific x ok that means you are uh, you are exhausting y from the joint probability mass function exhausting y y is no more appears because we have already sum up, we have already seen those points, we have sum up all those, so that is where this we call it probability mass function of x for that a specific x. So, ok, so this we, uh, this is the way to compute joint pro marginal probability mass function from the joint probability mass function. How you do that? That means, uh, you have to exhaust x, you have to exhaust x. Likewise, you can find the probability mass function of y by summing joint pro joint pro uh, probabilities along the line y equal to a small x, uh, also a small y. That means, you are fixing uh, y and x is free to vary. You are talking about all point on the line y equal to a small y. So, then, then you will get probability of observing that uh, y, ok. So, this one is marginal probability mass function of x that what row, column row is giving. So, in the last example what I had taken example, the column sum is giving probability mass function of x, all possible column sum is giving probability mass function of x and all possible row sum is giving probability mass function of y. So, that in the last example we have already computed. So, that is the I am saying that column sum and row sum that you can generalize that. So, third uh, application is Bayes rule and we will talk about inference. So, Bayes rule is again you have to restate the conditional probability mass function so that uh, what is happening that this is uh, restatement of conditional probability mass function if you are writing like this way this multiplication rule that means here first you are observing x and after that you are observing y that means you are talking about updated probability mass function of y under the scenario of x that you are observing. So, uh, here you are having a so, this we call it Bayes rule. So, here Bayes rule simply as per uh, as per restatement of the definition of conditional probability mass function, you will say that conditional probability mass function of y given x, it would be what? It would be equal to uh, joint probability mass function of x and y, 
joint probability mass function of x and y and you have to decompose that joint probability mass function in term of uh, prior probability of y and conditional, pro conditional probability of x given y okay and and here you are dividing it by probability of observing that a specific f okay so what we do here here we are computing probability mass function of y under the scenario of x so what is happening here uh, definitely we might have some information of y as well so that uh, based on that we are having a prior probability mass function of y this one is p of y is a prior probability mass function of y okay and we multiply this prior probability mass function uh, with likelihood of observing that x this one is the likelihood of observing that x okay it is just coming from multiplication rule it is just multiplication rule not more, not more than that okay and the denominator we are having probability of observing that x with respect to uh, x we are trying to update with respect to condition on x equal to small x uh, with respect to observed value of x we are trying to update the probability of y that means we had a probability mass function of y okay initially we had uh, we don't know whether we are correct or not but we come up with some simplest uh, distribution happens to be uniform distribution you can come up with the uniform distribution and then you say that uh, you doubt over yourself that uh, the pro that the initial probability mass function of y may not be right what distribution we have taken uh, then what we have to do so try to see another situation there another random variable there another random variable is what x if another random variable is x is there if uh, that random variable whether that one is going to influence the probability mass function of y or not that influence we have to see so that's why we, we come up with another random variable x and with respect to that we try to uh, influence uh, see the influence of x okay over computation of probability mass function of y so that means update probability mass function so probability mass function of uh, here it is just it is coming from again conditional probability mass function so here uh, this we call it posterior probability mass function of y once you have already seen probability mass function of x or uh, x you have seen observed value of x so based on that you are trying to update this so the updated probability is written as probability mass function of y time likelihood of observing that x divided by what is the probability of observing that x okay and uh, uh, if you talk about how you compute this probability uh, this probability the value of probability mass function at x you can use the total law of total probability law of total probability because y is introducing is a discrete random variable it introduces a partition of the sample of space so you have to compute the probability of observing x in all possible scenario of the partition of sample of space introduced by y so that means it is coming from total probability law so also you can say that it is one kind of evidence you collect the evidence you are collecting the evidence in order to update the probability of y probability mass function of y likewise also if you are uh, suppose you are having scenario that here first you are observing x some uh, due to some convention first you are observing x like in the last example professor may example that uh, it was very easy to observe x first y was complement uh, complicated okay so such scenario here so if uh, uh, but if uh, uh, another situation if y is uh, very simple to observe observe y first and then we are trying to observe x condition on y so in that case we are trying to update the probability mass function of x based on the observation of y so here we will have some prior distribution of x and likelihood of, observe, of observing y under that prior distribution if you come up with a prior distribution under that prior distribution what is the likelihood of observing that y so that we are computing and we divide it the probability of observing y that that we compute it through total probability that we compute it through total probability so previously what we have discussed all those things coming in together in the bayes rule so this is the bayes rule okay so in the bayes rule in the second uh, here we will talk in detail here what is uh, if you are trying to compute pro conditional probability mass function of x given y then here what we will call it this we call it prior probability mass function of x or prior distribution of x it will be totally based on question or if it is not mentioned in question you can go with uniform distribution you can go as is 
which one is easier you can go, you can go with that distribution and the second component here uh, in the numerator we call it likelihood of observing uh, y condition on x likelihood of observing that you come up with the prior distribution of x what does it mean you know all possible uh, probability distribution that means sorry probabilities of observing those uh, random variable of x that all what are the probability distribution once you come up with the prior distribution that means what are the probabilities of those random variable under x okay that you know that once you come up with the prior distribution so with respect to that all possible probability there is probability will be there so with respect to all these probability you try to compute likelihood of observing y so that's where this function we call it likelihood or you can say that it is data generating process also you can call it and that in denominator we are having probability of y so under the all possible scenario you have to compute probability of observing y that we call it evidence also we call it evidence so read two three times if you are unable to understand let me know again so again it is coming the same framework what we had discussed in Bayes rule for event in model one it is coming like that, that way so i will all all these will clear from the example as well so we are here uh, applying to compute probability mass function okay so one question is coming like this way suppose we are having uh, a random variable x that one is counting number of f ones in the binary string of length l do you know binary string do you know binary string or not that means it is a sequence of numbers digit digit there your when you say binary a string a string every might everyone might be aware of a string okay then in that a string uh, if you say it is binary that means it is made from 0 1 0 is coming then 1 is coming then 1 is coming i don't know which one will come but either 0 will come or 1 will come so that one is the binary there is a string which is made from uh, 0 1 like uh, Everyone might have seen uh, uh, some kind of uh, what we call uh, if there is a, some, some some kind of uh, rope and other kind of things, so twisted kind of things. You might have already seen that. Have you seen rope kind of thing that twisted twisted? Haven't seen. Have you seen rope or not? It is very much. I don't say that I haven't seen. If you haven't seen, they don't know anything. Okay, so it is just. Uh, you say that uh, there are various nodes and something like that okay so it is it is very easy to say i haven't seen anything it is very easy to say because you don't want to use your brain and it is very easy to say so 0 1 this kind of thing so 0 1 1 0 0 something so so there is a rope which is made from 0 1 so you take uh, take a ball give name 0 take another ball give name 1 and collect all the ball in a sequence then you will get a row okay so that one is or you will get a string so it is collection of 0 0 1 and so, uh, so that one is the binary string and everyone might be aware of decimal string have you ever aware of decimal uh, a string or not have you aware of that now if i simply say uh, 1 by 3 write in decimal representation what is the decimal representation of 1 by 3 what is the decimal representation of 1 by 3 you will come up with 0 0.3 what is meaning of bar don't say here 3 3 it will come on okay it is what repeating in nature a, a three will repeat itself several times so what is this one this one is a string what kind of a string this one it is a decimal string number is coming from decimal system this in decimal system you are having number from 0 to 9 that digit are coming 0 to 9 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and if i take another number like uh, uh, pi what is the value of pi in decimal form representation what is the value of pi 3.14 so it is 
it will go on like that. This one, what is the difference between 1 by 3 and pi? Pi is having a non repeating and non terminating behavior, but uh, 1 by 3 is having repeating behavior. That means a rational number is having repeating or terminating behavior. Like if I say what is the value of 1 by 2, it is just 0 0.5. What is the value of 1 by 9, it will repeat 0 0.1 and it will go on like that. So, uh, 1 by 9 is a rational, 1 by 2 is a rational. Why? Because in decimal representation you will see that it is having either terminating or repeating behavior. But if you take irrational number, it will have either non-terminating or non-repeating. There is no repetition and also it will not terminate. If you talk about E, E is also another uh, that uh, irrational number. If you talk about a square root of 2, can you find terminating or repeating things, re representation, there you will see all possible decimal uh, that a string, you, you, you are getting decimal string there, that means the decimal string. Likewise here I am talking about binary string. So, a binary string might be clear to everyone, okay. So, there in the uh, in binary string only 0 and 1 are coming, okay. Through that you are making, you are trying to give a representation of a number, okay. So, you are having a binary string whose length is L. L, L number of uh, that uh, digit are there, sorry, uh, binary numbers are there, L number of 0, L number of 0 and 1 are there, okay. And each bit in the string is equal to 0 and 1, 0 or 1, 0 with probability 1 by 2 and 1 with probability 1 by 2, okay. And the bits are independent, independency is there. So, uh, if I ask uh, what is the distribution of x for a given L? What is the distribution of x for a given L? When L is fixed, x is talking about number of ones. Call it success. So that means x is talking about number of success. What does it mean? X is having for a fixed L, one observed value of L, x is binomially distributed. X is talking about number of ones. So, so that's way for a fixed uh, L, a given L or observe L, X is distributed in a binomial framework. This is the binomial distribution, okay. So, what is variable here? If you try to see, you, you are talking about one given L. So, what is variable here? K is variable, okay. Fine. I will. Now, next, uh, the length, uh, suppose the length of the string is also random and uniformly distributed between 1 to 10. That means L is distributed between 1 to 10 in uniform manner. What does it mean? Probability mass function of L is 1 by 10 when L is object value uh, 1, 2, 3 up to 10. And if L is uh, equal to 11, then what is the probability? 0. So, for otherwise it is 0. So, otherwise it is, so L is having a uniform probability mass function that one is 1 by 10. Okay. So, distribution of length L is also given. So, here length L is not uh, deterministic, it is also stochastic in nature, probabilistic in nature. So, so we learn that binary string contain 4 ones, that means x equal to 4, you come up with the value x equal to 4, 4 ones. Okay. How can we use this information to update the probability mass function? for the length of a string L. That means you have to find what the probability mass function of L given x equal to 4. So, here just we will write it here uh, a small p of L, L sub, uh, as a, a small p su with suffix L given x of uh, a small l and what is uh, x is observe, x is observe here 4. So, we will write here 4. So, we have to find this updated probability. This we call it updated probability. So, there here we have to apply Bayes rule. Bayes rule will give 
this probability. We know the probability mass. So this one is the prior probability. probability prior probability of L, we have to find the posterior probability. Prior probability is given and also it is, we know that X is binomially distributed for a given length, fixed length. It is binomially distributed. It is not like that. Right now here we can't say X is binomially distributed. When you are fixing the length, then X is binomially distributed. But X, L is random in nature. So how will compute it? So uh, first we need to compute the probability of or likelihood of observing 4. What is the likelihood of observing 4? Just we had seen that for a given L, X is having a binomial distribution and there put K equal to 4. Then that one is the likelihood of observing 4. It is likelihood of observing 4. It is not directly giving a probability distribution of uh, X. Okay, given L. It is not giving a probability. It is likelihood of observing 4. And if you try to see here, what is variable here? What is variable here? L is variable. Because here K is equal to 4. K is equal to 4. So, L is variable. So, the likelihood function in the numerator, the second term what I had discussed, that would be always function of always function of that in the prior distribution what you are fixing that observing first that uh, if you are observing x first then it would be function of x if you are observing y first it would be function of y so here k equal to 4 so here, here, here you have observed l first the prior distribution of l so that means it would be function of l so this we function we call it likelihood functions f of l likelihood functions f of l we are calling it now uh, Further, we have given the prior distribution of L is 1 by 10, okay, and uh, using again total law of total probability, we can compute probability of observing 4. How will uh, uh, compute probability of observing 4? That means uh, here in the plane, this one is talking about x axis, and this one is talking about L. So, you are willing to compute x probability of x is equal to 4. This line is x equal to 4. So, you have to sum the probabilities of all joint points which are coming along the line x equal to 4. x equal to 4. How many, how many points would be there? How many points would be there in the line x equal to 4? How, how many joint points would be there? 10 joint points would be there. Why? Because L is varying from 1 to 10. So, there are 10 joint points. One joint point is here, L, 1, 2, 3, it is like uh, 10 points would be there. Okay, 10 points. So, we have to sum up all those probability as per total law of total probability. Sum all these probability and that will give, so that one is written like this way, that will give our probability of observing 4. It is probability of observing 4. So, we have already computed probability of observing 4, that is the evidence. That is the evidence what we are having. Now, we are trying to update the probability of L given x equal to 4. So, how we will uh, compute this? Prior probability of L times likelihood of observing 4 under the prior uniform pattern of L divided by evidence of observing 4. So, what would be this? Put all this here. So, this is 1 by 10. It is coming as 1 by 10. This one is the likelihood of observing 4. What would be that? L choose 4. And what is the probability of success? 1 by 2, 0.5. So, 0.5 to the power 4 into 1 minus 0.5 is again 0.5 to the power L minus 4. If you add the power exponent, then it will be 4 plus L minus 4. It would be L. So, that is 0.5 to the power L. In the denominator, you have to put probability of observing 4. That means probability of joint point along the line x equal to uh, 4. x equal to 4. So, you have to put it here. Put here and you got this is the updated probability. Do you see that whether uh, this updated probability is uniform? Is it uniform? Is it uniform? That means constant. It is constant. Same for every point? Not. 
it depends upon l it is a function of l it is changing when you why no 4 is value of x not value of l zero it will come zero then computation you have to write it so there uh, that one is uh, you can simplify it. it it is not like that if you everyone know that uh, uh, if you are defining combination n choose k uh, n must be greater than equal to k if you are taking n less than k what will happen you will get zero value so that uh, that you can do that so in a very systematic way i have written we have already computed now another question is uh, here so it is little bit complicated question and very simple question you can solve in a very different way so there are three types of coins which are which have different probability of landing heads when tossed three type of coins different probability of landing head that means p1 p2 p3 you can call it like that so type a coins are fair that means what is probability 0.5 uh, probability is point uh, okay uh, those are type b coins are bent little little bit bent okay and having probability uh, 0.6 and type c coins are also bent having probability 0.9 p1 is 0.5 p2 is 0.6 P2, P3 is 0.9. So all different, different coin, different, three different coin. Okay. Suppose I have a drawer containing five coins. There are five coins in the drawer. Two of type A, two of type B, and one of type C. I reach into drawer and pick a coin at random. Okay. Without showing you the coin, I flip. Uh, flip it once and get heads. Now I am asking you what is the probability that it is type A and what is the probability that it is type B? What is the probability uh, it is type C? So again you have to come up with Bayes rule kind of things. So consider A, B, C be the event that chosen coin was of type A, B or C. Okay. And D be the event that toss is head. Okay. So the, pro the problem has been asked. Uh, you have already tossed now. What is the probability that uh, uh, what is, it is type A. Once you have already tossed, so you have to problem. Uh, problem is that you have to compute probability of A given D, probability of B given D, pro probability of C given D. That this probability you have to compute it. Okay. So experiment that pick a coin from drawer and flip it. Uh, I am trying to formulate in uh, the, this one is the first approach. Uh, so this is the first approach. Uh, like uh, you can call it uh, here. Uh, the probability of each uh, uh, hypothesis prior to tossing the coin, collecting the coin, since the drawer has two coins of type A, two coins of type D, uh, one coins of type C. So what you can talk about? The prior probability, you can take it as uh, empirical probability, uh, that frequential, uh, fre frequentist probability. Like how many coins are there? How many coins are there? Five coins. In the five coin, how many of type 2? How many of type A? A? Two. So it would be 2 by 5. What is the value of 2 by 5? 0.5. Then uh -huh, uh, that's why this one is the prior probability. P of A, a 0.5, it is the prior probability. And uh, probability of B is again uh, 2 by 5, so 0.4. And probability of C would be 1 by 1 by 5. So again 0.2. Okay. So this one is the prior belief, prior probability you come up with. Now, the likelihood of function is probability that uh, uh, D given hypothesis. That means probability that data, uh, the data assume that the hypothesis is true. For example, you can say that uh, uh, what is the probability of D given A? Probability that head if coin is tossed, uh, that toss, uh, toss coin is type A. Uh, in our case, the hypothesis that uh, uh, it is uh, again in question it is given that. In the question, it is given. What is the probability of getting head? D is probability of getting head. What is the probability of getting head? If it is type A, it is 0.5. Probability of getting head, if it is, it is type B. In the assumption, what is given? What is the probability of getting head in uh, second bent coin? Uh, the first bent coin is 0 0.6 and the second bent coin is 0.9. So this one is given in the hypothesis. And then now we have to compute this posterior probability. 
so again you have to apply Bayes rule formula here so this competition is uh, all about first you have to compute the evidence probability of D in uh, all these three scenario you have to compute in A B C in three scenario and all these value are probability of A is given what was 0.4 prior probability of observing A uh, probability of D given A it is given 0.5 uh, like compute it so probability of D is 0.6 now next you have to compute where it went then just uh, what you do apply here what you are having you are having everything here you have uh, having probability of d you are having probability of uh, uh, it is not going back here okay it came here so how you will compute probability of a given d these are the desired probability so apply Bayes rule probability of a into probability of d given a divided by probability of d probability of d you have just computed it is 0.62 and probability of a is what the prior probability of A, 0.4, that 2 by 5, it is okay. That, through uniform distribution, you come up with that probability, uniform assumption you had taken. And what is the probability of D given A? That means if a uh, coin is type A coin, then uh, that means it is a unbiased coin, fair coin. Uh, if you are taking a fair coin, what is the probability of getting A? 0.5. So, so what is the posterior probability? It is 0.322. Simplified, you will get posterior probability of like B is what? What is the posterior probability of B? Simplify it like this way. It is 0.3871. Posterior probability of C given D, it is 0.2903. Simplify. So these are the posterior probability that you have to compute it, all these. So all these are, uh, we are solving it through module 1 approach, event kind of thing. How you can convert in, uh, in term of uh, distribution? So distribution approach, it is coming like this way. Uh, here, uh, I have already mentioned it. You can see it like this. Uh, in term of if you convert uh, uh, in term of uh, random variable theta uh, with respect to theta and theta is taking uh, that uh, what we call it uh, parameter you call it parameter generally uh, probability of success you call it parameter okay so in in in, in first case you call it 0.5 in second case call is 0.6 and in third case you call it 0.9 and you can compute probability of a uh, the, these are the prior probability. These are the prior probability. What we call, prior distribution. You can call it prior distribution. Okay. Prior. This one is the distribution of theta. Okay. Uh, this is the prior distribution. Uh, prior. Uh, this, these are the in different scenarios. These are the value of theta. Okay. These are the prior distribution of theta. Prior distribution of theta. Theta is having distribution and uh, having distribution. Posterior distribution. We are willing to compute. Uh, under this scenario, okay, this scenario, uh, this, uh, this is the posterior distribution. This is the x equal to 1 is talking about success. x equal to 1, we are talking about success with respect. So, this one is prior distribution and this one is posterior distribution. So, in term of distribution, if you are willing, willing to compute it, you can go like this way. This, uh, this is, it is coming through uniform distribution. That means there are 5 coins, each coin is having probability 1 by 5. So, 2 coins are type A, that means 2 by 5. 2 coin are type B, this means 2 by 5, and 1 coin is type C, then it is 1 by 5. So that one is uniform law, what we call it. So uniform distribution we had taken, and this one is the uni uh, updated distribution. So it is uh, second approach, that uh, model 2 approach. Now, uh, the third application we have already discussed. Do we have time? Yeah, we are having time. The uh, last one here we will discuss about. Uh, uh, application of uh, conditional probability and further other things it will come later uh, like uh, till now we have already seen uh, x and it is having a probability a random variable x and it is having probability mass function of x that means we have all probabilities for all possible probabilities with respect to each possible value of x so we are talking about this order pair now, whether it is giving a better information or everything, all info, uh, complete information, if you, we know a random variable, that means we know all possible uh, random number that X is observing, then we know uh, probability of observing those random numbers, so then uh, our job is done, it is not done. We have to go for further uh, like that representation of those random numbers. If we are having a random variable x, then those are taking random numbers, those are giving random numbers. 
if uh, we are having random numbers, the also we know the probability of observing those random numbers. Now, next question would be that, can we get a representation of that number? What is meaning of representation means? Can we get a mean or expectation of that random number? If we are getting expectation or representation of that number, then we can say that most of numbers falls near to that represented number or expectation. If are you getting meaning of expectation or not? Yes. Expectation or uh, uh, representation, uh, it is a one kind of representation of random numbers that x is observing value. So just knowing the distribution of probability mass function of x is not enough. You have to talk about representation of those random numbers, where those random numbers are coming. So one example, motivation example, uh, I have taken it from one book. So here uh, you can see that these are the rainfall data. These are the rainfall data, okay, uh, from the year uh, 1900 to 2000, okay, rainfall data it is coming. And rainfall data generally, rainfall generally we measure in inch or centimeter, something like that. Various units are there. So here these are the data and once the, uh, we collected data, we can estimate a probability. We can estimate a probability mass function of from this data. So this is the estimated uh, probability mass function of this rainfall. How, anyone may raise a question how we get this probability mass function? What you do? You project all these heights in the vertical axis. Then you will see that uh, in the vertical axis numbers are distributed. Number are distributed. Okay. So that one is our simple what we do? Uh, you go for frequentist approach. That means uh, how many uh, days you observe uh, 4 inch, how many days you observe 2 inch, how many days you observe uh, uh, 10 inch, uh, 12 inch or 14 inch, 16 inch. So what you do? You normalize it by total number of days. Normalize it. So that one is the frequentist approach that you are saying that. So through frequentist approach you come up with probability mass function of this rainfall. This is the probability mass function, the frequentist approach, okay. Are you getting frequentist approach or not? It is simple to compute that uh, uh, uniform law uh, in case of uh, you have taken a finite sample of space. So that uh, there always you go for frequentist approach. In, when your sample of space is finite, then we go for frequentist approach. That formula that number of element in event A divided by number of element in sample of space. That one is exactly frequentist approach. Okay. So uh, through that we come up with uh, the probability mass function. Now question is coming here that whether this uh, knowing the value of probability uh, random variable and the corresponding uh, probability mass function is enough, whether it is enough that can we talk about everything from those two? That one question is coming that whether there is adequate rainfall in uh, this uh, this data is from Rhode Island, it is near to USA, it is under USA I think, uh, to sustain a farming endeavor. That means whether it is, uh, if you are getting a certain amount of rainfall distribution, Ren you, you got a rainfall distribution of one area, whether that one is enough to talk about uh, uh, farming process, like if you go for uh, paddy farming, then what is more essential requirement for paddy farming? Water, watering, regular watering. And if, if you go for wheat, then again you need watering. Okay, so that kind of uh, uh, rain, you need rain. Okay, so whether that one is adequate rain, how will say that from distribution? How will say that? So if you are going for farming, something like that, you have to talk about like that for a particular crop, we might need a rainfall between 8 to 12 inch. Okay, this has, uh, if you try to compute 8 to 12 inch, it will fall around here, uh, 8 to 12 inch. So here something like that. Okay, so this you will compute it through by summing the probabilities for probability that x is equal to uh, uh, a small, uh, sorry, x is, x is equal, equal to 8 plus x is equal to 9 plus 10 and you sum, by summing you will compute this probability. That probability that, uh, what is the probability that uh, rainfall is between uh, uh, 8 to 12 inch, it is just 0.5278, whether this information is enough to say that we, we will go for uh, that uh, uh, for a farming of a crop, this one is not enough. We can't say much. So what we have to do? So rather we might be better served by uh, computing or ascertaining 
the average rainfall since it is closer to the required of an adequate amount of rainfall so what is the average rainfall it is 9.76 so if you are going for a crop farming you need a rainfall 8 to 12 inch okay and you come to know that in that area there is average rainfall of 9.76 that means you can do that farming farming you can do that the farming of that crop you can do in that area if you average you, you have computed average rainfall in that area then you can say that okay farming of paddy is possible if average rainfall is between 8 to 9 8 to 12 then you can say that farming of paddy is possible if average rainfall is uh, below 8 or it is around 1 to something like that then definitely you will be not possible to farm okay and uh, suppose if your average rainfall is uh, above something very large then again paddy will not sustain if a small or large it, it will not sustain you need to know that average thing is very important that means representation of the rainfall is very much important if representation of rainfall come in the uh, that farming uh, capacity of crop requirement of uh, rainfall of for that uh, special crop you, can, you will go for farming so average is very much essential i would like to say that average is or expectation is very much essential uh, that uh, apart from knowing uh, value of random variable and distribution so we will define here expectation or average so consider a discrete random variable x and we observe suppose we observe n random value or uh, random numbers of x we observe x may have more than n so we are just observing n okay then what would be the mean of those n of values we have to sum it those values and divide by n so that one is empirical average we call it empirical average expectation okay empirically and that would be if we are taking n is very large n is approaching to infinity that empirical average is uh, it will approach to expectation expectation of x we call it expectation of that means uh, you if you do, uh, when you go for empirical uh, average when you don't know the distribution you are just observing uh, n number of values and summing it up divide by n then you are getting empirical average of that uh, quantity and later what you if you take n is approaching to infinity it will give expectation of that random variable so how expectation is defined as expectation is defined as it is weighted it is uh, weighted sum of the value of random variable weighted sum of value of random variable the weight is provided by probability mass function of that value this is the weight weight is provided by probability mass function of that value okay how it is coming like that so if you suppose you don't know probability mass function of x so i am asking to compute average of n values how you will compute average of n values you sum those value and divide by n you have sum this value and divide by n see if i uh, take here like this liberty how does it look like you have sum all these value and in denominator just forget for the sake of here uh, in denominator n is coming here and i have just uh, uh, bifurcated all these uh, bifurcated so like uh, you are writing it here uh, average of n number how you will write it x1 plus x2 plus it will go like that and divide by n this is the average of n numbers this might be common to everyone and what we do here uh, we uh, take n in derivative with every xi so you can decompose the summation like x1 by n decompose the summation the next term would be x2 by n plus it will go like that okay you are decomposing it like this way then what you do uh, in uh, separate it 1 by x1 plus 1 by x2 plus 1 by 
x3 like that way. So that's where here terms are coming here property that x is observable a small x1. So 1 by time x1 uh, property that x is observable x1 plus 1 by n time property that x is observable x2 uh, likewise it is coming like that way. So average with that we have written it like okay. So it is one kind of uh, here all uh, here uniform distribution we have taken it like this way. So when n is approaching to infinity it will becomes this summation. Here simply we are here uh, p of x. So 1 by n is p of x. p of x. 1 by n is p of x. It is coming as p of x. So that weight is coming. So it is weighted sum. It is not sum of x. It is weighted sum of x. And the weight is provided by probability of observing that value. Are you getting meaning of this or not? It is actually average that empirical average what you had seen in your high school. Now we are coming with weight kind of representation. The weight is actually 1 by n has been changed to probability of observing that value. Probability of observing that value. So that is where the expectation is weighted sum of the observed value of a random variable. Okay, the weight is provided by the corresponding probability mass function. This we call it expectation. So, we have already seen expectation. Now, uh, if we come up with a function of that random variable g of x, we call it y. What is the average of y? If you are observing like way n value of x, the correspondingly you will observe n value of g of x as well. So, if you are willing to estimate the average expectation of g of x, you sum it up and divide by n sum it up divide by n okay then what you will get here that means you are finding average of g of x that means uh, weighted sum of g of x the weight is replaced by probability mass function so the, the uniform weight 1 by n is replaced by probability mass function of observing that x probability mass function okay observing that x so here you will say that just one thing you observe you are computing probability mass function uh, expectation of g of x or expectation of y and here we are not putting distribution of x here we, uh, y we are put, taking here distribution of x so it is just simple rela uh, relation okay. i think uh, here you can say that expectation of y as a random variable function of a random variable is again a random variable so how you will define uh, expectation of a random variable weighted sum of y the weight is provided by distribution of y, probability mass function of y. Simply as per the first definition what it is borrowed from here, okay. So it is uh, expectation of y. Now you come to see that uh, uh, what is actually y, y is actually g of x, y is g of x. For each uh, y you are getting inverse image of y in term of a small x, g of, so y is actually g of x. Now uh, what you do? For each y, there are various x. There may be various x, inverse images of x. So, if you are willing to compute probability of observing y, it is actually probability of observing inverse images of y. And you have to sum for all x, all those x which are mapped to y, that a specific y. So, that means here we are, uh, the, this uh, p of y, it is actually replaced by this quantity. I have already mentioned this uh, during derived distribution. I have already mentioned derived distribution or or probability mass function of function of random variable. I had already discussed. Same probability mass function of y, I have replaced it by this quantity. Okay. This quantity and y, I replace it by g of x. Y is what? G of x. A small y, one observation is g of x. And we are taking a summation with respect to x. And once we are writing y is g of x, so actually you are taking summation with respect to x. And it is probability of all those x which are mapped to y. So we are writing it like this way. Actually, overall, we are taking summation with respect to x. That's why it becomes uh, summation of g of x into probability mass function of x. So here, you don't have to compute probability mass function of y directly. You don't have to compute. You take probability mass function of x, multiply with g of x, and sum it for all x. You will get expectation of g of x, expectation of y. This we call it expected value rule. We, this approach we call it expected value rule. It is way to compute probability mass function of a uh, function of random variable, EVR in short you can call it. So in, na in next uh, uh, part of lecture,
we will discuss in detail few examples we will discuss okay any question till now